Somewhere between Inchigila and Dunmenwe, we have come across a man who, to say the least, is extraordinary. Not only is he extraordinary, but what he has attempted to do and what he has indeed achieved here is remarkable indeed. Jim is a self-sufficient man, living out here among the mountains and the forest. Completely self-sufficient in that he provides his own food, his own heating, his own lighting. He builds his own house, his outhouses, and just about caters for all of the needs that he has. Jim has very kindly allowed us to come and visit him today, and he is going to show us around his property. So we go inside and say hello now to Jim. Jim, this is your garden. You've had to do a lot of clearing to achieve this. Yeah. There's old gorse and bog myrtle, just on turf, sort of. Brambles, yeah, total mess. Total so mess. it's just, it's, it's a garden on turf, but at the same time I'm looking at soil. Yeah, I've had to sort of make raised beds all over, bring in the soil, make big compost heaps, keep adding to it each year. So you're actually barrowing soil in here, are you? Yeah. What have, what have you growing here? Most veg. Quite a few, half flowers actually, <laughs> if I think about it. Yeah. Sweet corn, cucumbers, tomatoes, strawberries, raspberries, onions, shallots, different cabbages, leeks, lots of onions. Yes. They're harvested. I, I'm noticing particularly that the cabbages haven't been attacked by slugs. Are you using um, products to keep them off? I do a bit, but not really in the garden here. In certain places at times I do, but I come out and I lift up the aubrecia and you'd find the slugs underneath. Yes. They always go for the aubrecia. No, I, pick, I, I come out and hand-pick slugs a lot. Do you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Morning, evening. Yes. Otherwise, masses of destruction if 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 you don't keep them. If back. you don't keep yeah. an eye on it. So you obviously spend a lot of time here, do you? I spend masses of time in the garden. Most of my time in the garden. Uh, one is immediately struck by this large wall, stone wall dry stone wall as far as I can see that seems to be uh, around much of this garden. Jim talk to me about this wall. That's, that's, <laughs> that's my hobby. I want it to go all the way around the place in the end. It's, uh, it's at least two foot thick and it goes down into the ground a couple of foot um, to protect the garden from any animal, deer, goat, people that might come in. Now when yeah. you say all around the property, what sort of distance are we talking about? Oh, this is a small part of the wall from what I'd like to do. It will take me another 10 years, I'd say, to finish. But you're talking about, I don't know, 100 yards? 100 yards of wall. Or um, more, more now, even. Let, let, let me be clear here in my mind. You, where is the stone coming from? Every farmer around lets me take stone. Uh, there's a lot of stone around, yeah. And how do you transport it here? Wheelbarrow on my shoulder. I had a dumper for three months, but uh, I had a tractor and box for a long time too, but I don't have machines normally. Wheelbarrow on the shoulder, a lot of it, but to do, to do this much, I'm gonna buy a dumper, I think. 
Yes. You just it takes all the it doesn't take any time to build it. It takes all the time to find the stone and bring it in and draw it in. So so you're talking about this this is going to go right up here and right around this right this property area. The other side area. of the house, the shed, yeah, and back. And it will seal this garden in. It's a walled yeah. it will yeah. then be a walled garden. Yeah. And of course that will be great for heat, won't it? Yeah, I've got great planted outside up against the wall now and I reckon because it's on a north facing wall the heat on that wall is amazing you see I put the greenhouse against the wall the wall heats up yes. and it takes ages for that wall to cool down so all in the evening the greenhouse is kept warmer for much longer yes and of course you have the solar panels set on the rocks beyond then yeah. no. and in the winter I would move them all the time facing the sun. I don't need to in the summer, I have too much power, yeah. So you, you actually physically come down and turn them? Well, I'm in the garden all the time, so yeah, I turn it and face the sun. And those solar panels are giving you heat in the house, are giving you uh, light, light in the in house? Light power for the television radios. Okay, let's make our way up there and see if what's yeah. going on in the house. Yeah. This is your house, Jim. Yeah. Built with your own two hands. Yep. <laughs> All the way from the, the bottom to the top, yeah. <laughs> from the bottom to the top. <laughs> and no labour of love, I take it. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the building of it. I've gone down to bedrock. Yes. Uh, you, you, and you put in a foundation, I gather, did you? Well, of some kind. Well, there's no need for the foundation because you start building with stones straight away on the bedrock. But I did have a machine come in and put six giant stones spread around where the foundations would be. Yes. And I built my stonework, joined them all up and came on up there. But on bedrock, I mean, that is your foundation, yeah. How long has it taken you to build this house? I suppose... Because you'd be gardening and working and cooking and washing uh, with normal li about three and a half years, I suppose. About three and a half years. And most of the time we'd be bringing the materials in, not building it. Yes, just like you did with the wall in the so, garden. Yeah. And uh, what's the, what is the thickness of the walls? It's two and a half foot at, at the bottom and two foot upstairs. So I go in a lip for the floor to That's sit on. And tell me about the roof now. Take me through that. Right sticks bundles and bundles of sticks uh, uh, polythene turf they'd be up here there'd be 300 daffodils at least this year more next year in the spring of course uh, <laughs> I shall I shall put more climbers all the way around it and, and so you won't see the stonework in the end okay this is a, a most interesting and certainly unique building. I don't think there are too many more in the <laughs> locality. Let's go inside, Jim, and have a look at it. <laughs> Now let's have a look around this room here. Your front door, made by yourself. Let me close it. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Cat door. The cat door. There's a sheet of 
half inch ply with panels of wood either side so it's really thick. Yes. And I noticed that you've got insulation around the edges. Right. So the draft doesn't come through where the stone is irregular. Yes. Do the cat door. <laughs> so that keeps the cat in or in, out? In or out, which whichever I choose, yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. Okay, and you've you, you built this door obviously yeah. yourself, yeah. and it's a nice arched shape. So can you just open it again so we can see the the entrance to the doorway? Right now, that's beautifully beautifully crafted there around the top of the doorway. Again, the thickness of the walls. What are we talking about? Two and a half, three feet, a meter almost. Two, two and a half foot. Yeah, and does it get narrower as you go towards the top of the building? When I get to the floor, I go in six inches, then it's two foot thick, so I can sit all the floor on that. Yes. So, you know, you work with buildings, especially in Ireland again, you've got all these joists going into a wall that rot. You can't get them out easy. If you build like this, everything comes straight up and off, doesn't it? You know, yeah. if your beams sit on the... Sit to sit on that ledge yeah. as yeah. you go up along. Yeah, yeah, and and the st and the steps as well. Let's let's swing around here a minute and have a look at the steps. Turn around this way, Jim, and talk to me about the steps. <laughs> Stone steps. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. just basic, simple. I thought. Yeah. How did you manage to get to get? You've got them all the same height up along, and there seem to be single stones in many instances. Yeah. So you've got them coming. Are they sunk into the wall as well? Uh, the, the stonework ties into the wall. Yeah, some go right in, some don't. But yeah, right. Okay. And your windows are double glazed. Yeah, just all the units and all the the framing is just sticks that I cut here. Oak trees that I cut down, or you see upstairs, all around the window is just. I've cut an edge with a chainsaw, I've not even planed it to make it look nice, it's just put it in. <laughs> yes, um, I, I'm noticing here on the windowsill is a catapult. I'm just wondering, do you do you actually, um, do you use of that? Often. For? Uh, that one mainly the magpies, which pull my compost heap apart. They come in the building. I leave the door open all the time. They can, so I drive them off with a catapult. With a catapult, yeah. Do, do you kill game at all for food? Rabbit. You kill rabbit? Yeah. Catapult, gun and bow. But gun... Mainly the gun? yeah. I'd say two, two. Yes. And when you say bow, do you mean bow with arrows? Yeah. Yeah. Are you good at... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have a fun time missing too, do you? I miss mostly. Do you? Yeah. Tell me about the game in the in the forest around us. There's plenty of pheasant, there's masses of rabbits, a few deer now. I won't go shooting at the deer unless there was lots. Yes. But like the salmon in the river, there's only a few now, so I wouldn't fish them. Yes. But, uh, yeah, rabbit is what I like, tasty. And you're secure in your food supply from one end of the week to the next? Oh, yeah. I have vegetables all year round. Yes. I have apples that I store. I mean, rhubarb, strawberries, raspberries, you know, loads of fruit. Yes. Just so now, Jim, um, inside here, one notices immediately that the solar panel is doing its work here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And we've got you've got lighting on the ceilings. I, I'd say they're the most most modern bulb you can get from Australia, a special company making them, they use no power, 7 watts, you can turn it down to using 3 watts, which is nothing, yeah? Yes. And um, Jim, we might take a walk upstairs now and have a look at your living area yeah. up there. Thanks, Jim. Come and get me to work. I said, you got to come and pick me up and, uh, and put me up. 
And now we're in the living area of this wonderful house. We're upstairs in the living area and uh, as you can see, if you look around you in just a moment, it is certainly different to say the least. Jim, this is your living quarter. Yeah. yeah. Surely the rain must come pouring in through that roof. No, no. <laughs> it goes pouring off of the roof. <laughs> it pours off the roof. And during the winter months in January now, for instance, you don't find that the rain is coming in? No, no, not at all. No. 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 And Jim, is there a lot involved in... Um, what, what kind of weight is there up on that roof there now? I'd say the sods, there's... Um, around four tonnes, I'd say. Four tonnes. Yeah. So looking from because the... Because it, it gets wet and it's thick. So it holds a lot of weight when it's wet, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so looking here from the inside and going outwards, I noticed first of all you've got the you've got the twigs from the forest here yeah. as your ceiling. Now tell me about those. What are they? What mostly, trees are they? Mostly hazel. But anything. You know, Sitka spruce, um, rowan, anything that I can find straight enough. And you'd come home with bundles for, for months because yes. it extends on out and you throw away half when you're cutting it up, yeah? Yes. Uh, on top of that, the, a neighbour let me have a dozen sacks of sheep's fleeces, you know, the, the wool cut off the sheep, Yes. which I covered the sticks with. Then I laid polythene on and uh, then turf, six inches of turf off the bog covered in heather. 300 daffodils over that side that come out in the spring. <laughs> and are you saying 300 daffodils on the roof? Yeah. All the way round here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there are too many houses around, Jim, with 300 daffodils growing on the roof. No. <laughs> no. Now, where, where did you learn to do all this work? Learn. I Did mean, you have to learn? Is it a craft or a background or a skill that you learned in you start school? As boys, or don't you? Making dens and I don't know. I taught myself to lay stone and. Yes, so it's a self taught craft. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, just playing, just building. Yes. Like as a kid building dens, yeah? Yes. Uh, talk to me about the stonework now on the walls, Jim. What? This, these walls seem to be very thick. Yeah, they'd be. Uh, two, two and a half foot thick downstairs. Um, there'd be an inch of cement on the inside, dry stone all the way through. Didn't have the money for more at the time, but I didn't. I've worked on loads of old Irish houses, yeah, redoing up for blow-ins and things. They're all full of soil. They're all wet. Yes. <laughs> this hadn't got a drop of soil in it, just small fine stones to fill in all the little holes, yeah. It's a dry, the last place I built was the same. It's the driest you can be. You, you should never put the soil in, in, in the stonework. It's ridiculous. Yes. And are you saying to me that, that, that there is no cavity, for instance, between the no. stones there? And, and no dampness at all? No dampness in? at all. It's the driest way you could build with the stone. It, it, I, I don't know. Well, it's easy to pile on the... When you're laying stone, it's easier to put cement or soil there to lay the next one and keep it all together and that, yeah. Yes. But it's, it's, it's just a ridiculous thing to do. Okay. So now, looking around your living room here and your bedroom area, which is combined, uh, it's very comfortable. I spoil myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 it is comfortable. It's a lovely place to live. And you've got some very good light coming in from the windows. You've windows both on the walls. Again, in Ireland, I, I, I learnt that there's not enough windows, there's not enough light in a house. Where you spend all your time, I mean, it should be very light, yeah? I mean a couple of years ago, I put a clump of bluebells in the garden, veg garden, good yes. soil. And two years later, I see all these little bluebells coming up in an area the size of the table. Yes. So this year, when they finished flowering and dried, I collected the seeds. I think 
I want bluebells in a few places in the woods yet. I yeah. should try and see if we can do it with a seed. That would be very interesting. It's so difficult digging up bluebell bulbs. They're deep under roots. No, seeds could be the way, yeah. yeah.